arrived in Pompeii, paid way too much money for an amazing, delicious breakfast. We have stored our bags at the free luggage storage at the actual Pompeii site. Do not fall for the people who are standing by the train station who want you to pay four euros per bag. And we're about to head in. Based on the amazing coffee and the delicious pastries that are always on offer for breakfast, then I think it's about to say the Italians know what they're doing. short time that we've been at Pompeii, I have had two thoughts so far. The first one is how much better preserved this place is compared to the Roman Forum in Rome. There's so many more preserved mosaics and frescoes and walls and columns. There's so much here to look at and you can really get a sense of what it looked like. My second thought is that these people had such a rich social, cultural, economic, religious, and political life. They really lived like we did today, probably just more simply. <laughs> surprises me is 
the sheer scale of this place. It's absolutely huge. And that's not just in terms of the overall size of the fact that it is a city, which does make sense, but it's also just the sheer, like, it's the height, it's the area of each building. All of this has been very carefully crafted so that it does encourage air to come through, that it can fit every person in, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's just nuts. I'm not 100% sure how big this city was meant to be, but Rome was a city with a population of 1.5 million people. At that time, it was a metropolis. So, if we can dig this up from this size, imagine what would happen if we tried to excavate Rome? Just how much more would we get to see? It would be absolutely incredible to think about. I think the other thing as well is whenever I've read about Pompeii, like the only things that I've seen have been the bodies of the people who've been buried underneath the ash. It's all been quite grey and all of that kind of thing. However, when you go into places like the baths and other buildings, you actually see all of the colour. It turns out like basically unlike all of the sort of statues that we see nowadays which all appear to be quite monochrome, Rome was incredibly vibrant, full of colour, full of life and full of energy and this is so great because you finally get to see that. Hello, welcome to the Mukdonaldium. Can I take your order? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? This is amazing. The very fact that you can, like, pretty much as a result of all of the preservation of being buried under volcanic ash, then we've just been able to see so many more kind of intact buildings, and this is one of them. It's amazing. Anybody who kind of knows what I like seeing when I go to cities and stuff like that, everybody will know I love a good stadium. And so seeing this so well preserved, so intact after such a long time is fantastic. It's kind of funny though, I was saying to Rachel on the way here, it kind of feels like because of the fact we've seen the Colosseum, we've kind of seen like the equivalent of Wembley for the time, whereas this is more like kind of a, a lower league ground, like imagine the race course ground at Wrexham or something like that. Because uh, in terms of relative scale, this I think was only meant to hold like about 12,000 people in comparison to the Colosseum, which is like 55,000. So yeah, but still, the very fact that we're able to see so much of this still after nearly 2,000 years is it's magical. We just went past what's known as the Temple of Asclepius. Now, Asclepius was the god of medicine, and he was always depicted 
holding a scepter with two snakes intertwined around it. That symbol nowadays is still the modern symbol for medicine. to head out after enjoying three and a half hours here in Pompeii. We have seen a fraction of what is here. I think they said they excavated about 44 hectares and there's just no way you could cover that in one day, let alone probably a few. But this has been incredible. Now keep in mind that I've come here before, but I really enjoyed doing the self-guided audio tour. We just bought one audio guide. We downloaded it onto our phone and then we just shared a headset for it and it worked perfectly. What I particularly liked is that we were able to move at our own pace and we could also visit exactly what we wanted to in what order. I just feel like with the guided tours that we've been having you never get to spend enough time at the places you want to you feel kind of rushed for photos and while a guided tour means that you can ask questions the audio guide was so informative so i really don't feel like we missed out on any information that we could have wanted yeah as a first timer here um, but somebody who has always taken an interest in all things history, classical civilizations and all of that kind of stuff, honestly, I was really hoping to see things like this the entire time. Um, not just because obviously you kind of want to celebrate what's come through in history, but you also want to try and understand it better. And 
the very fact that this has been so well preserved, so carefully excavated to the point where you can literally walk among it really just gives you a true appreciation of what life here would have been like all those years ago. So really, I mean, this ticket was, what, 18 euros each, I think? And, um, and it's really only about sort of a 40, 45 minute train ride from the center of Naples. And it's 100% worth it. Like if you have a spare even a half day to go and explore, would thoroughly recommend doing this. This has been my favorite thing that we have done so far. Mine too. And I also really love the fact that I don't feel crowded. Of course, there's certain places where people tend to crowd up or there's bottlenecks at the entrance. But once you space out, you really do have room enough to explore yourself. This has been a wonderful half day. From here, we are going to go to Sorrento. arrived at Sorrento and we're on our way to the hostel but we saw this little square and thought it'd be a really good idea to stop off and grab some lunch so we went to the supermarket bought a lot of provisions for the next couple of days uh, but before that then we're gonna have a nice lunch of a sandwich for me and a protein bar and then on top of that there's a fountain just there where Rachel has uh, picked up some free water so let's dig in. been so tired from the last few days of walking around so much that we decided to just hang out here at our accommodation in Sorrento and we've been editing which has been very productive. So for now, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>